Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Heroes of Karth Deathmatch. We've done a couple other videos like this before, but this time we're going to be focusing on the a archer deck and the spider deck. The game plays from two to four players, takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play, and is roughly for ages 13 and up. It's one of those games in which you're going to be setting up a battlefield, having your own unique custom or pre-set up deck, and then playing with that deck and moving your units across the board. Three ways to win, you can either lock up all of your opponent's spawners, get 25 kill points, or collect 40 gold, and if you can do that, you're gonna win the game. Now there's a couple variants as well, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Let's go ahead and show you the two new and interesting interesting different card types, the spider deck as well as the archer deck and how it's set up. So here we have the two decks for Heroes of Karth that we'll be talking about. This is going to be the archer deck and this is the spider deck. Some car, uh, just card decks will come with tokens like this one here. The spider deck comes with stuff like webs, lesser uh, totems and poisons and all kinds of other stuff here. Even spiderlings that the spider queen and other spiders can summon. And just like before, it's going to be a five by three grid for each player with 15 cards and the extra card that is not used in the drafting and the placement. It's going to be put here. You can put on anyone you want so you can tell the three decks differ, uh, apart from each other. You have spawners and grassland and lesser mana pools and uh, the treasure. These are all the basic lands over here. And then back here you have stuff like the forest tile which is going to be a new one specifically for the fight spider deck. However, remember you can actually set it up to where you can make your uh, terrain very unique and customizable. Each deck here, we have different ones here. You're going to have the treasury deck. This is going to be the mercenary deck or the barracks deck. And this one over here is going to be the spell book. And it's going to be set up like that, however you'd like to do it. And you're also going to get a bunch of dice. You're going to have your mana over here you'll be using or spell power. These ones over here are your kill tally. And over here is the wounds you'll be placing on your units. And just like before, you're going to be out and selecting five cards from either of these three decks. There is a specific um, thing that they tell you to do like one three and uh one I mean or one, something like that where you can actually have um, for beginners or intermediates but you can kind of set it up yourself and also something new too is the Heroes of Karth Deathmatch app. This application is really really cool and it shows I'll show you exactly how to use it right now before we get into talking about the turns and whatnot. As you can see here you've got all three of the dice that you would be normally using here. You actually can set it up here onto your tablet or your phone and it also has an HTML or a website variant so you can use it on a, on a on PC or a Mac or any of that kind of stuff as well. You start with your five coins here and whenever you gain either mana or kill points you're simply going to tap a button and it will signify that you're able to do it. Now if you can see here they're not working that's because right here it's on negative which means you can go lower and you can switch to the positive and now it will go higher. When you do this, the game will start counting down the, to the timer, will start counting up to show you how long the get turns lasting, as well as whenever you want to reset, you can simply do this and it resets everything back to zero. Pretty simple. What also is really interesting too is you have a no sleep mode here in the settings, as well as a two and even a four player variant if you'd like. So you can have all four players playing on one single app and with this tablet be really nice and you'd simply you have the push and plus and minus right there and then each player has their own unique little screen. This is very, very useful and removes the amount of table space needed for all the dice everywhere. However, you'd probably still have to use these for counting the damage on the characters. But overall, it's a really nice app and it works on your tablet just like any other app would do. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the game and how to play a little bit and the different cards that are going to be interacting in the Archer and Spider deck. So I've done a couple other videos of Heroes of Karth and you want to get into a more in-depth gameplay in the description below I will leave a walkthrough link so you can go ahead and check out the full gameplay as well as see as a bunch of turns. Mainly for this we're going to be talking about the two decks the Archer deck as well as the Spider deck and kind of how they function. I'll be playing a couple turns as well to show you basically what they're going to be doing to be different as well as the different tiles on the board. But the same thing just an overview is you're going to start with five coins in this game you're going to be using those to buy creatures and buy spells and play different things as well as you're going to be having kill trackers so whenever you kill a monster you're going to be collecting uh, gold as well as kill tracker points three different ways to win the gold way the kill way or blocking spawners. Blocking spawners means your opponent can no longer play any of their units and that's a good way to win as well. Three different various different ways to win the game. On your turn you get to draw from any of the decks you want which is really nice and you could choose to draw from the spell deck, the barracks deck or even the treasure deck and that's going to give you different things throughout the game. 
And on your turn, you're going to play creatures down on the board, just like you would normally play, maybe like Magic the Gathering or other similar card games you get, where you can't initially attack as soon as you play, and on your next turn you can, and they'll have their own various abilities. And turns are going to be taking place in a clockwise manner, and usually the rule is the fairest and most simplest is going to usually be the correct way to do it. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of turns of play, as well as some new and interesting cards presented in these two decks. So as you can see, I went ahead and set up the game. I put a couple creatures down just so you can see how a turn is going to function. That way I can show you a couple of the new things, as well as the basic starting items. So everything here is basically starting except for the creatures them being down. Now normally to pay for a creature, it'll tell you at the bottom left uh, hand corner how much it's going to cost for them, as well as how much they're going to be giving away when they die. And then they have the kill value. You're going to have your movement, your health, your attack, and then your defense is over here. Your Whether or not you're going to get gold at the beginning of your turn is going to be up here top left hand corner. And then whether or not you're going to get mana is going to be in this area over here right in here in the middle one two and four now you're also going to have the different types of cards on the side which these are all barracks cards obviously and these all these terrain tiles here are going to tell you what they do now normally for most of the decks you're going to have the lesser mana pool and the treasure area which is whenever you have a movement um, movement end here the character move their move their creature here and end their turn you're going to get one gold you're also going to be able to reduce their spiritual energy which is this blue thing uh the other abilities whenever they're on this area by two, which is really useful. You also have this forest over here, and this actually halts movement, attacks, and blocks line of sight. However, rangers, druids, and hunters are immune to the movement and attack penalties. So whenever somebody is trying to shoot through here, they're not going to be able to do that, or whenever they're in their forest, it's going to be harder for them to attack, specifically if they're not the three different specific classes. And this is going to be for the spiders. Spiders live in the forest, so you're going to get some forest cards here. You're also going to be looking at these guys over here. As you can tell, I put up a couple of these guys. This is the Elf Lord, and this one here is a Ranger Captain. He's basically a named hero character. And then I've got the Spider Queen here at the bottom, and she's got a ton of cool abilities, and then I've also got the uh, Sp Spider Rider. Now, to begin a turn, it's pretty simple. You're going to unturn all your characters that have been placed the turn before. You're going to get one card from any of the decks you'd like. I'll go ahead and select one from this deck here, put it into your hand. You're also going to get one gold coin. In addition, you'll be getting one coin for each additional character you have that has a gold symbol at the top there, which means he'll get two more. And then you have spiritual energy, which you're going to add based on the total amount of blue symbols here, four, five, six, and seven. So this guy will go up to 17. You'll be using spiritual energy to use your abilities here on the cards below. And uh, that's all you're going to need to know for that. You can play cards from your hand, and they're going to have a specific cost in the bottom left where you can go ahead and choose to play them. You're also going to be able to play uh, one treasure card from your hand and as many spells as you can, provided you can pay the cost. So, for instance, I can go ahead and play this gold treasure card here, and that's going to give me two additional gold, which will let me play more units down on the field. So, I can go ahead and play this elf ranger. He's going to cost me four, and I can put him on any of the spawners, and he'll just go ahead and start just like that. As you saw with some of my other characters, I cannot use her for this turn. I can then move all of my characters individually, though they can all do a movement and an attack as well as sometimes they'll be able to use special abilities, which you can see my other videos in the walkthrough for how those work. However, this guy gets to move too. He's gonna move moving here and then here, and then he can simply attack. He can attack anybody within his range. Certain um, characters with uh, range will be able to shoot far, uh, farther away than others. Some of them get bonuses depending on their abilities. And generally for melee, it's going to be neck and neck, right next to each other. And they all have different abilities here with the different costs for the spiritual energy. This one says move an ally unit one space. This one says uh, play unit um, for free up to level two, provided you pay four spiritual energy and ambush plus three damage until end of turn. So that gives a boost to damage and so on and so forth. There's a ton of abilities on this guy because he's a special character. But if you simply wanted to attack with his regular attack, it would just be eight damage minus his defense, which would be nothing, and putting eight on this guy. And he has 17 total health. So if he hits 17, he's simply removed. And this would, uh, this guy, this character over here, or player, would be able to gain three gold and three victory points and or kill points. He's moved his character, so he's going to turn it to the side, signaling that he's done, and he's not going to use any of his abilities. He can then go ahead and move the rest of his units just like so. It's going to be up, down, left, right. He can choose to move this guy here, which will end his movement on the treasure space, giving him one more treasure. And then after all of his characters are turned sideways, he is done. This is the spider deck, and it's got a couple cool things here, which we'll talk about more when we're above. But this spider queen is able to do poisoning bites. It can do crushing mandibles, summoning a spiderling. And as you saw, there's tokens here in this deck, and there's a spiderling token here, and it does certain things like it can 
can walk on webs and it applies more poison. So she is a really useful card, very powerful card indeed. It's also going to come with um, heroes as well, like this guy Drog here. He is going to be a champion, and there's going to be, I, I believe, a bunch of ogres, or not ogres, sorry, goblins in this deck. There's a lot of goblins and a bunch more spiders as well. And they have different abilities too. They can always have go uh, golden coffers. It says armor crush. It can, it can do an... It Indomitable Rush, it has Earthshaker, it can call for reinforcements, and it always has camaraderie among the warriors. So basically it would be played the same way. You'd move all of your characters and turn them all to the side. And you're basically trying to block all these spawners off. You're gaining gold as you do it. So if you choose to not play creatures and you're just trying to gain gold as much as you can, you can go that route. Or simply killing up to 25 points of creatures on your opponent's side. And it plays either two players or up to four players. As well as using the board itself. The board itself has a bunch of different areas in which things happen. Well, for the most part, though, the grassland spaces don't do anything. Also, if we look at the spell deck over here, well, this is the treasury deck, if we look at the spell deck over here, there's a bunch of spells for the different decks. This one here has got a volley spell and a healing spell. This one here has contagious poison, which is probably more going to be based on the spider deck, as well as a counter spell or a negation. And that is a basic idea. Like I said, though, if you want to see even more turns, go ahead and check out our walkthrough in the description below. For the most part, this is kind of what you're getting with the archer deck and the spider deck. Let's go ahead and take a look at more of the cards up close and personally between, between these two decks. So let's go ahead and get into the spider deck and the archer deck just a little more, a little more deeper so you can see what you're actually going to be getting in these decks. The spider queen, for instance, is really, really cool. She's not actually a champion, so there's more than one in the deck, which is nice. And it has a bunch of powerful abilities like poisoning bite. That's going to apply poisons to uh, different monsters. you got crushing mandibles, which is plus four damage, and it ignores armor. Summoning spiderlings is going to give you, uh, it's going to cost three each, and it's going to give you, they have two range with for three maximum on the field. Contagious poison, which is poison that spreads, and it has a half circle, which means that it can be used as a bonus action. Normally you can only use one action per character, but sometimes you can use bonus actions, and sometimes you can use bonus actions not on your turn, which is also a nice little ability. And you have Cocoon, this doubles HP, but only for spiderlings. You're also going to have a lot of goblins in the spider deck. This is a goblin chieftain, and goblin chieftains are going to have stuff like rallying, plus two damage to all your allies, and bonus movement. This is Drog. He's a champion for the goblins. He's got armor crush and calling reinforcements. He can simply draw cards. Draw Drawing cards on characters is very, very useful, especially when you play a lot of cards and you're going for that crushing victory. Sometimes people want to go with the gold victory, but if you really want to put the crush on your opponent, you need to be able to draw cards, and Drog does that. Carrie has golden coffers, and she can, uh, she's uh, first of all, poisonous to uh, poisonous arrow, which applies poison after attacking, and it is, she's immune to traps and walk on webs. Wow, that's really good too. Expose uh, revealing units plus four damage and summon spiderlings. So she can actually summon spiderlings as well. She's actually a basic hero character. That's really cool. And another spider queen. You've got giant spiders that have climbing abilities. And you've got contagious poisoning in your spell book that spreads poison to one radius so all the way around. And poison enemies within one target radius can be cast on your opponent's turn and must they must already be poisoned though. So it's just going to even do more. Wow, that can really hurt you eventually there. You've got the archer deck, which is going to have stuff like the volleys. It's going to have stuff like magic arrow. So you have a torch. This is going to reveal destroying webs, destroying darkness. This is a very good counter to the spider deck. You've got the uh, magic arrow, magic bow, plus two and ignores armor. You can spend uh, two more energy to do plus damage, uh, plus two damage and ignores armor. And you got a hunter's mark. That's very cool as well, if you remember World of Warcraft. And three of the captains here, the elf lord, which is mainly these guys going to let you draw from treasury. They're going to help you improve your allies. And they're going to do movement stuff. This guy's able to hide, so he starts face down, which is really, really unique and interesting. I like that. It reminds me of those ambush cards from Magic. And you've got fire arrows exposing revealing units rescuing that's really cool too and stealthy uh, this way here is an elf lord and he does rallies and extra attack for a damaged ally really cool so there's a lot of different cards in each unique deck right and if you're looking to do more control more precision the spider deck is going to be one, one for you because in, with the spiders you're going to be able to move around the board dropping webs dropping poison kind of it's kind of almost like blue in a way when you're playing magic or like in Yu-Gi-Oh when you're playing control it has that effect affinity for working with 
each other. They all have their own unique abilities, but they all kind of function together and they all do different things that kind of relate to each other and help each other out. And placing those webs down and moving around the board to your exact positioning where you need to be so that way the opponent's unit gets stuck and your spiders are all around him and they crush him. Really, really cool. The ranger deck is going to have stuff like marking their targets and throwing and shooting arrows. They're going to be very far range. They're going to be able to ignore that forest area, which is really beneficial. And some races or classes are going to have a hard time getting through that, but for them, they, they're very, very agile. They can still get stuck in webs and all that nasty stuff. The spiders still have that ability to poison them and freeze them and lock them in place, but the rangers are agile. They're able to help move their other characters. They can draw cards from the decks that they need to draw in order to get that advantage because they're going to be likely dying from the spiders, but there's going to be so many of those rangers going around there shooting their bows and whatnot. They can deal with them until the spider queens come out and then bam, all the spiderlings are out. And now there's a wave of monstrous spiders coming at your archers. So you start shooting volleys. I like both of these decks, as you can tell. Like I, I'm really, really enamored with Heroes of Karth. I think it's a really cool game, and it's something you can just jump into and play with these two base decks. Not to mention, though, that there's deck construction amongst them as well. You can construct uh, your own unique deck by using these base decks, and they're going to have unique booster packs, which we'll talk about in a couple other videos in a little bit here. Um, and you can actually kind of make your own decks, adding different stuff. There is certain rules to deck building, which we'll get into when we talk about that stuff as well. But for now, these two decks have their own unique aspects to them. They all have the, the ability to counter each other in specific kinds of ways. But as you can see, with the more decks that come out, the more variability there is and the more interesting aspects are in the game. Let me go ahead and tell you my review for this specific set of two different decks, as well as what I think about their combination with the game Heroes of Karth Deathmatch altogether. So what do I think about this specific one for Heroes of Karth Deathmatch, these two different decks? Well, first of all, like I say always, this is a very unique deck building aspect of a game and it involves gold and where you're spending the gold to make units. And also you're gonna get spiritual energy as well as the kill and you have so many different ways to win which is really nice and each of the different decks has the ability to do their winning the way they win in a different way spiders instead of actually fighting you could try and lock people up with those webs and moving around the board making it harder and harder for them to come at you while you slowly collect gold that is a way you can do it or you can simply go out and start trapping people surrounding them and poisoning them and whittling them down until they are nothing the ranger deck is going to be able to go out there and pinpoint the main difficult targets in the spider deck like the queens and the different heroes units and start whopping them down so they die. Yeah, there's spiderlings, but who cares? I'm just going to volley those later. So the rangers have those specific marksmanship aspects of them, and that is very useful as well. Their ability to be agile against those certain things like the forest areas, or even maybe webs, depending on the different types of cards there are. And that is also really, really cool. The artwork, like I've always said with Heroes of Karth, is amazing. They've done an, an incredible job with making this game, showing off the artwork. All the characters have their own unique poses, and they all have their own even the card, the way it looks, is different than any other type of game. I like that. Very easy to distinguish. Attacking and movement on, and attack, movement and health on the right hand side, and then you've got all the defenses on the left. Everything the card does, and all the points that require to either cast the card or get stuff from when it's dead right at the bottom. And then, of course, the top is the name and what you might be getting. It's, it works very, very well. There is a lot of different text on the cards, and there's a lot of different abilities and whatnot. And like I said, it's kind of like those other CCGs in which you're going to have to learn as you go along and play the game. You're going to have to refer reference the rule book when it comes to something like, oh, I don't know what camaraderie is, or I don't know what this or that is. And then you can look it up really quickly. And once you've kind of seen it once, you've got it down, pegged down instantly. You know how it's going to function for the rest of the game and uh, subsequent games as well. I've sat down and the more I continue to play this game, the more I enjoy it. I have really, really enjoyed playing. The last game we played, I'm just like, I, it was something I just sat down and I was like, wow. I really, really enjoy this. And now that I know even how to play even better now, I can understand the different strategies that pertain to this specific deck, even though I've never played it before. And learning about the extra little abilities, extra little things added to each and every unique deck is, is a, such a little bonus. It's like a sweet little like tidbit that gets thrown onto the cherry sundae, right? Overall though, this game is excellent. I really enjoyed both decks and I think they all have their own unique purpose that kind of fills. And one thing I can say is you're gonna see some of the repeats from different decks, like the ranger deck and the archer deck, or the um, goblin deck and the spider deck, they're going to have certain cards that are kind of mixed in together, but that kind of works too anyway, because you can kind of make your own deck around that aspect. So if you want a specific deck that's only focusing on spiders, that's something you can actually make yourself in your own customizable way. Overall though, excellent game, always stamp of approval for Heroes.
Heroes of Karth death, death match. I look forward to seeing their next content, which I hopefully will be getting to test out here. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, please. It always helps me greatly appreciate it, as well as checking out Heroes of Karth death match. This one for the Spider and the Archer deck. But there's so many others to choose from, and we have a great amount of videos on our site where you can go ahead and look through. In fact, I might even create a playlist because there's so many of them. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And if you'd like, you can go ahead and find all the latest Kickstarter games, as well as getting the different giveaways we're doing right now. I think one is for Kingdom Death Monster, and there's a couple other ones, big ones, big names. Uh, you can check it out on the website, as well as checking out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and... Uh, the cardboard stacker Ferdinand, my close personal friend, they have great sites and ter terrific, terrible, terrific reviews. So you should definitely check them out right after you check out my stuff. All right, guys, that's all I got for this one. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.